So this is cymatics. And what cymatics does is use sound vibration in different frequencies to create geometrical forms from particles which without the sound, the vibration, are just all over the place, random. Then suddenly there's a sound and woo, they move into these amazing shapes. This is how matter is created out of the void. Um, this is a, as an example of it here. This is just sound moving particles around to create form, cymatics. When they change the vibration, they change the, um, the, the created form. It's going to be massively important in section two, this. And so, and so this reality is just a frequency range interpenetrated by other frequency ranges, some which interfere with it, most that are so far away do not even begin to interfere with it. And so we live in our little world, but interpenetrating it are many other worlds that are very different to this one. Um, and our frequency range, this is crucial to understanding so much that's coming today, is tiny. Um, I don't go with the dark matter, dark energy stuff, I just talk about the visible and invisible universe, but this is, this is uh, what mainstream science says. Of that which exists in the universe, that which we perceive, uh, the electromagnetic field up to a point, and visible light. Visible light is the only frequency range that we can pull into a world that the conscious mind can perceive. Everything else is beyond it. And the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005%, mainstream science says, of what exists in the universe. Some say it's a bit more, but not much. Visible light, which is the only frequency range that we can pull into a reality we experience with the conscious mind, is a fraction of the electromagnetic field. So, as someone rightly said, humans are basically blind in relation to what we can pull into a conscious reality from what actually exists in the universe that we're um, experiencing. Thus, this is our world. We can't even perceive through the conscious mind these other levels of the electromagnetic uh, spectrum which technology can. So we have a visible universe which is tiny and we have an invisible universe which is invisibly infinitive, infinite. And thus we, what we call a world, what we call the world that we think we're living in is a tiny, almost infinitesimal frequency band. And if we don't know that, but that which is manipulating this world does, we are in an extraordinarily powerful uh, state of potential manipulation. And the focus of attention I keep talking about, that this society, this crazy controlled society wants us in, is that focus of attention wants us only in that tiny band of frequency, visible light, and not to access the inspiration and insight beyond it through this and the greater mind that will give us a greater fix on what this visible light really is, because it ain't what we think it is. So if we come into this reality and we hold a connection to the greater self beyond it, what I call consciousness, then we've got everything we need. We've got uh, the five senses and the body-mind to directly interact with this frequency band and to get a fix on that level of what's going on and to interact with it. If consciousness, the greater self, wanted to interact with this frequency band, it couldn't hold this because it's on a completely different frequency. So the outer shell, the body that we take on, is within the frequency band that we want to interact with and thus we can pick things up and they stay in our hands. Sacred geometry was preserved throughout history in Freemasonic circles since it was believed to be important knowledge revealing the secrets of our universe. The secret of sacred geometry is that vibrations or sounds form geometric patterns. Goethe reputedly said that indeed geometry is frozen music. 
Music is geometry and geometry is music. The basis of the universe is form and pattern. Both are organs of perception and the phenomenal world we perceive seem to be best understood as systems of pure pattern or as geometric structures of form and proportion. Due to this, many ancient cultures chose to examine reality through the metaphors of geometry and music. Sound, like word and rhythm, forms the trinity of the shamanic power of language. Sound of a certain octave is reputedly able to produce psychic, psychological or emotional effects and also freeze water, kill a man or break down walls as in the biblical legend of Jericho. The frequency of 432 Hz is deeply intertwined in nature. However, most music worldwide has been tuned to 440 Hz since the International Standards Organization endorsed it in 1953, following the prior recommendation of the Nazi Party spokesman Joseph Goebbels in 1939. Research suggests that the international standard of 440 Hz tuning generates a deliberate unhealthy effect in the environment and human physiology. According to Brian T. Hollins, it brings about an unnatural 8 Hz change in how we think and how our DNA regulates our genetic makeup. The structure of certain sacred architecture contains within it complex geometry which mimic the biogeometry of life and generate harmonics that have a noticeable effect on people's states of awareness. When combined with the chants and mantras, people can quite literally massively amplify their consciousness. There is pervading the whole universe a single homogeneous resonance, a sound or tone which acts, so to speak, as the awakener or vivifying power, stirring all the molecules into action. Without this resonance or motion amongst the quiescent particles, there would be no visible universe. Alexander Lautawasa writes in The Creative Music of the Universe, At the physical level, the intricacies, beauty and interrelationships of what could be called the superconscious designs of the universe are gradually being revealed. From this perspective, there is no essential difference between the structure of an atom, galaxy, a chakra, a crop circle, or even the Sufi whirling dervish ceremony. It is only a matter of scale and perception. As above, so below. Within these phenomena lies something, some process perhaps that suggests the superconscious design with its fundamental archetypal patterns and displays of unity. Professor Robert Moon at the University of Chicago has demonstrated that the entire periodic table of elements, literally everything in the physical world, is based on these same five forms. Sacred geometric shapes can occupy both a static and dynamic position. The static position is a low entropy state, whereas the dynamic position is a high entropy state. Hence geometry can be used for both destructive and creative purposes. To give an empirical example related to the dodecahedron, Moon showed that the last natural element of the periodic table, uranium, was based on the form of two connected dodecahedra being torn apart. This rupture creates a toxic nuclear radiation. Interestingly enough, the most intriguing of all platonic solids and the most mystically significant is the dodecahedron i.e. the fifth element, Aether. The ancient Greeks considered knowledge of the dodecahedron a closely guarded secret and feared that this pattern could cause tremendous destruction if misused. Only hints at this pattern's existence were given publicly, as in Plato's famous statement that the earth seen from above appears like a twelve-sided leather ball. Modern Russian scientific research has discovered that there is indeed a dodecahedral pattern to the earth's crust. The earth is a living crystal, with energy meridians much like the human body. Further to this, findings in 2003 from NASA reveal that the shape of the universe is a dodecahedron based on phi, the golden ratio. The dodecahedron was also found to have importance in relation to DNA. Dr. White mapped out the relationship between the amino acids across the 3D surface and found that it formed a dodecahedron. The universe is a dodecahedron, the earth is a dodecahedron, DNA folds into the dodecahedron. As above, so below. As you sit here, millions of cells are splitting, undergoing mitosis, and the whole process is being guided by hyperdimensional geometry. Phi, the golden ratio, 1.618, is the universal constant of the design within the physical, i.e. phi, cycle, reality. Phi can be found throughout the universe, from the spirals of galaxies to the spiral of a nautilus seashell, from the harmony of music to the beauty in art, from the microscopic to the macrocosmic. The constant symmetry of the golden ratio throughout nature also attests to the holographic nature of reality. In the 15th century, Fibonacci discovered that if you add 1 to itself, then 2 to 1, then the sum 3 to 2, and the sum 5 to 3, etc., then you end up with a series of numbers, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc. The ratios of these one to another dance around and approach more and more closely to the golden ratio. These ratios describe the most efficient way of packing spirals about themselves.